This video walks you through the automation fundamentals learning exercise, which teaches you the modular development fundamentals required to use Medano to build modular scalable financial models. Now, before starting this exercise, if you've come from the standardized or review exercises, uh, make sure that your system is switched across to automate mode via the mode tab uh, and the via the mode group in the Medano tab by clicking on the automate and that you can actually see the module tools such as insert, replace, duplicate, etc. across the Medano tab. Otherwise, you won't be able to use the modular development tools. Okay, now, one of the first things you need to be clear about when you're building modular workbooks is knowing when you have a modular workbook open. Now, this is made obvious by the Medano tab having an asterisk when you have a modular workbook open. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to go to the open menu within the Medano tab and open an example model. I'm just going to open the basic annual forecast model. And notice when I open that file, the asterisk appears on the Medano tab. Now a single asterisk appears when you have a modular workbook open and a double asterisk appears when you have a module open, which we'll discuss in the customizing and creating modules exercises. Now there are a few different ways you can create a modular workbook. You can use the new menu and you see we, in the earlier exercises, we looked at the freeform blank and freeform time series in the standardization exercise. You can use the empty modular workbook tool to create a new modular workbook and then add modules to it. Or you can simply open a new workbook as I'm going to do here. And you can just insert a module directly into that workbook and it will convert the empty workbook into a modular workbook. So to try this, click on the insert menu and click on insert from web. You'll need to make sure you have an internet connection and the insert module from web dialog will load. It gives you an option of selecting different libraries and variations of those libraries. Now, in this case, I'm going to select the Generic Financial Modeling Library, which contains a huge number of variations. And I'm just going to keep it simple and select Chart of Accounts 1 with no sales taxes. Now, over time, we're going to add more and more libraries at Medano that help you with different types of models. At the moment, the Generic Financial Modeling Library is pretty good for almost any type of model. As a starting point, it will give you sort of 50, 60, 70% of what you need before you start customizing. So I'm going to select from this, I'm going to select Annual, and I'm going to put United States in. And I'm going to select the revenue amounts module. Now the revenue amounts module is probably the simplest module we have in the system. It's just literally forecasting revenue over a number of categories. So if I insert that, you'll notice what happens here is the workbook in the background effectively is converted. The cover sheet, the overview sheet goes in, an appendices and check section, and now the module is being inserted. And you'll see also that the after this is done, that the Medano tab is now an asterisk saying it's a modular workbook. And if I go to the overview sheet, I now have assumptions, outputs, and appendices. The big difference between this and a standardized workbook that's not modular is that these pieces can be automated and reused. Now, the key to understanding modular spreadsheet development is understanding how modules fit within a workbook. So if you think about this model right now, it's literally the same as a normal Excel file. It contains no VBA, etc., but it contains revenue assumptions and revenue outputs. Now, from a modular perspective, this workbook is a workbook that contains a revenue module and the revenue module contains two components. One module component contains, contains the assumptions, which is here and spans basically the range A9 down to N15. And the output component of that revenue module spans A9 down to N18. And that's basically the content that's been built into this revenue module, which has two components, an assumptions component and an outputs component. And understanding that logic and terminology is really fundamental to scoping and planning modular workbooks. Okay, now I'm going to go to the revenue assumptions and I'm just going to put some default assumptions in here so we have some numbers to look at. And then I'm going to insert a an operating expenditure module. So you can see I'm starting with revenues and then I'm building up to add operating expenditure. So I'm going to use the insert from web tool again, insert module from web, and you'll see by default it detects what my last module inserted into this workbook was, and it was from the Generic Financial Modeling Library, Chart of Accounts 1 variant, no sales taxes, United States annual. So in this case I could filter for operating expenditure and put in operating expenditure amounts module. Now the operating expenditure amounts module is very similar to the revenue amounts module, only it obviously is an expense rather than the revenue, so it will go different places in the financial statements and have different implications on your model and your cash flows. But in essence, it's a module with an assumptions component and an outputs component that collects assumptions for operating expenditure by category. So like with the revenue module, I'm going to go and put some, some dummy data in this. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to click on the inter-component hyperlink and verify that those assumptions have gone through to the operating expenditure outputs, which they have, and I now have two modules, a revenue amounts module, an operating expenditure amounts module, and each of those has an assumptions component and an outputs component. So let's see how these modules will link into an income statement when we insert an income statement module. So go to the insert from web tab, insert from web menu, and this time select income statement, or I'm just gonna go back to selecting all genres. And when I've done that, I'm gonna select income statement. And you'll see it's, it's automatically detected chart of accounts one, which is the income statement module that's been added to this library. So it's compatible with these modules that we're using. So I'll insert the income statement module. And you can see the income statement modules come in, the rows are compacted, so I can actually expand those and I can see I have my revenue module coming in there and my, my expenses module coming in with my salaries and wages, rent and administration down rows 24 to 26. So effectively what I've done now is I've got a model which contains revenue expense assumptions, revenue expenses outputs, and an income statement with that data linked in. So I can now look via my project manager tool by going to the build tab, project manager, and I can confirm that my model now contains the income statement module, the revenue module, and the operating expenditure module. Now, when I inserted the revenue module, the time series module came in with it because it was a it was a precedent requirement of the revenue module, and the error checks modules were automatically inserted by default when we actually created the workbook, which is one of the options which you can switch off, but by default, it will put all three checks modules in. So we currently have three modules other than the time series and checks, and you can actually look at the relationships between those by clicking on the links and expanding module links and saying, okay, I've got the income statement, revenue links into the income statement, which also links in operating expenditure, and then operating expenditure links into the income statement. I can also click on any of these modules in the left-hand side, and I can view their components. And if I double click on a component, for example, the, the income statement component, I double click on that, it will show me where that component is in Excel. I can also click on any link between these. So I can go back into my income statement, click on a link and say, show me where my revenue link is, and it will actually show me where the formula links are that link the revenue into the income statement. Now the relationship between modules that are linked together, like the revenue module into the income statement, is a precedent dependent relationship between these two modules. And that's how we think about modular financial modeling. So you have a workbook that contains modules, modules contain module components with Excel content, and links between those form module links and precedent dependent relationships. Now one of the most powerful things about Medano is the fact that you can add categories to any module and it will flow through the entire workbook. Now this functionality is actually required for you to be able to insert modules into workbooks and have them linked to each other because obviously if you inserted a revenue module with five categories into an income statement with three, one of them has to actually give. So in that case the income statement would increase to five categories. Now that functionality can be used also just to add categories to modules that already exist. So in this case, let's assume I wanted to add a fourth category of operating expenditure. I could come to the operating expenditure module, assumptions, insert categories, and it adds a fourth category. Now it wouldn't have mattered whether I added that to the outputs or even to the income statement that it links into, that flows throughout the entire model. And that's one of the most powerful scalable functionalities in Medano. Now another scalable functionality in Medano is the ability to duplicate modules. So let's assume this revenue module was say a business unit and you wanted to duplicate it and have multiple business units in your workbook, you could just use the select the one of the components within the module, press on the duplicate button within a Medano tab, specify how many times you'd like to duplicate, I'm just going to do it once, and a, a complete copy will be made of that module including its assumptions and outputs. So we now have two revenue modules and if I go to my income statement, both of those are now linked into the income statement and I can verify that by going to the project manager and I now have two revenue modules and they're both linking into the income statement. Now let's assume that I'm not happy with the way in which the second revenue module is forecasting revenues. I don't just want amounts for each period. I'd like say an amount in the first period, then growth rates. Rather than deleting this module and inserting a new one, I can use the replace module button. So I'm gonna to go to replace module from web and specify the module I wanna replace, in this case, revenue module two. Click okay and it will actually say to me which modules are available for this library that are revenue and okay I've got a whole bunch of revenue modules I'm just going to choose the amount and growth rates module and replace and it will literally replace this module and restore and keep the links in place so you can see here this module is still linking into the income statement there it is there it's still flowing the whole way through only it's now based on an amount and growth rate assumptions for each category
Okay, so let's put some default assumptions into this module we've just duplicated and then replaced. And then just click through to the revenue outputs and make sure that the calculations are actually correctly reflecting the entered amount of growth rate assumptions. And just make sure that the income statement also contains that data, which it does. Now you might have noticed that when we inserted and we duplicated that revenue module, the first revenue module, it's automatically named the second one revenue two. This doesn't really give us much to go by. So what we'd like to do is rename those modules. Now, modules are really only visible, their names in the project manager, but you can actually use special default assumptions, which enables basically the name of the module to flow through into Excel. So you'll see here, if I now go and use the rename tool in Madano on the Madano tab and call this division one, it flows through into the actual title and it doesn't matter where I am in the second one here, I can rename this and call this division two. And that flows through. And if I now go into my project manager, I've now got division one and division two. And I can sort of rename modules anywhere, even in the project manager. It's just a really nice way of making it clear what the modules are in your workbook. Now, another handy functionality that Madano makes available is automating the insertion of subtotals. So an income statement here, we're now linking in products from division one and division two, but it's not really clear because they're all bunched into one big block of categories. So I'm gonna right click and do insert subtotal and name the first one division one, second one division two, and now I've clearly got my two divisions coming through into my PL, which if I group that up still shows as just a total revenue, but I can ungroup and see division one and division two revenues. Now after doing that, let's assume I would like to extend the duration of this model. Now at the moment, the model is five years long and let's assume I wanted to make it eight years. Now traditionally you just have to copy everything across in every sheet and make sure that all the formulas don't break. Madano, because again, it needs to support scalability, enables you to create time series modules in which the actual duration of the model is determined by an assumption cell. Again, this is an advanced application, but you can create your own time series modules, or you can just use the existing ones off the shelf like we've done here. So I'm just going to change the term to eight periods, and you'll see it's saying it's going to actually add assumptions because it's going to extend the model. And then I can go back to my revenue assumptions, and you'll see every single sheet now contains uh, the extra columns in the assumptions outputs and every single sheet that is based on that time series set. And in that way, you can extend and roll models automatically without having to do anything manually. And that automation of module insertion, module linking, categories addition, module duplication, and time series extension really does open up a whole new world of dimensions which you can use to create scalable, rolling financial models for any purpose.